What up players, it is Warboss Tail of this mug. Welcome to a video wrap up showcasing my work with these eight Tyranids. They are metal Tyranids from the old metal range. They are out of print now. You can't get them now except on, on eBay or from a specialty merchant who, uh, I guess a specialist merchant who would, who would be carrying these still or like a game store that has these buried deep, deep in the vaults. I love them. Hey, I used to uh, think that metal models were just rubbish and you want to always be getting the coolest, newest stuff that there was and why would you waste time and money on the older models? But uh, besides being collector's editions, there's a... Uh, and except for, uh, you know, other than the, the collectability of having these models that you can't really get that they don't manufacture anymore, so you have to get through other various means. I, I like just having the weight of them. It's it's always cool when you're used to working with so many plastic and resin and lighter models to have that kind of weightiness to them. And that's funny because I am a guy that when I started painting, I had a lot of metal models because that's kind of all that Citadel and Games Workshop would sell for their, their characters. I would think that when <laughs> when I got a plastic or a resin model, I liked that because it was it was lighter and it, it wasn't as heavy. But I guess you always long for the thing that you don't have a lot of in the moment. So right now, I'm really enjoying these Tyranids. That's enough of me yammering on about them. Let's talk about these models. The first thing I want to show you are these three, I think they're Biovores. Not sure what you would call them. I painted them all identically. The uh, point of this commission was for them to match the other High Fleet Behemoth models you might have seen on my channel before. And that is because this client is a return client that I'm very, very grateful to have. And uh, he's been gracious enough to commission me to do these guys to, to match his other giant plastic Tyranid monsters. So you've got these three metal biovores. They are done in the same color scheme that I've used before. The reds, for those of you who are kind of taking a look at these for the first time or seeing, seeing this uh, color scheme that I'm doing for the first time and are thinking that you, you'd like to replicate it. Very simple. The reds are basically Mephiston red as a base coat. And uh, what I do is I don't paint them one color at a time. I do a red base coat for the skin and all the red bits. And then I do Incubi Darkness for all of the dark armor plates. I'm not going to call them black because they're kind of like a dark bluish gray black. And uh, so once I've got Incubi Darkness, I do I actually do Abaddon Black for the uh, talons and any claws. What's funny is with these models, you've got these claws or these like tiny little vestigial arms under there that you don't really see unless you're looking and uh, unless you pick the model up and then you can kind of see them. But I, I painted everything. These are done at a war boss standard, but I still, I paint everything. There are some commission painting studios out there that will just use an airbrush and go over once, twice, and then head them out the door to make some quick sales. But I, I wanna make sure that when you get a model painted by my studio, you can turn it around, you can pick it up, you can look at it. And even at a war boss level, which is my lower of two levels that I offer right now, uh, I, I want you to be happy with what you get, which is uh, my goal. And I think I did a pretty good job with these guys. After the base coats are down, I do a, a wash of Rhinox Hide mixed with Lamian Medium. Now, a lot of people do Agrax Earthshade. I've mentioned this before, but when you use the Games Workshop or the Citadel range of washes, what I noticed a lot is that you get some really horrible, ugly looking pool pools, and they look kind of oily and dry when they dry up, and they're just not... Uh, a great way to go if you if you want to do a whole wash of a model unless you're you're there and you're watching it dry and you're able to move the the wash puddles around with your with your brush what i found was that using your lamian medium and making your own custom wash kind of uh, eliminates a lot of that. It will still dry in pools, but the, the effect will be a lot less glaring. And uh, all, all it takes is really do a wet palette and you will get a, a much better result in the end. I think I, I'm a huge advocate of Lamian Medium. I'm kind of sad that I came aboard this train so late in the game, but I, I love it and I think uh, everybody should do it. After that's dry, highlight back up with Mephiston Red and Incubi Darkness, and then with the reds, I went up a step further with Evil Sun Scarlet, and then finally you might see a lot of these streaks, these kind of highlight colors, and so I went with Ungor Flesh for that. And that is great because it's it allows you to pick out details 
for example, in the face, so the eyebrow, the jawline, the cheek, things that you, you'll see if you pick up, but I also want you to see it from, you know, a good distance away. So that's why I think it's, a, it's really great to use Ungor Flesh rather than an orangey highlight like Wild Rider Red, which you could do, but I think this makes them look a little bit more realistic, a little bit less cartoony. And uh, if you go with an orange highlight, such as Wild Rider Red, or you know, an even orangey color like uh, Troll, Troll Slayer Orange, or Troll Slayer Bright, I think it's called, or Fire Dragon Orange, whatever those colors are, then I think it will tend to look a little bit more cartoony, and I think this actually retains some of that that uh, realism that I like. It looks a little bit more subdued, the highlights do, rather than crazy in your face. If that's the look you're going for, then yeah, by all means, go from red to an orange, and then maybe even highlight up to a, a dark yellow, and that'll give you a pretty cartoony comic book effect. The blue scales, or the armor plates, the blue plates rather, after being re-highlighted with Incubi Darkness, go up with Dawnstone on the edges, which I do for all of the individual armor plates, and then Carrick Stone, which is more of a brown beige than a, a gray or a blue, and that will help the eye pick it out and ma make it look a little bit warmer. And again, give it a little bit of, uh, of realism, which I think is really good. Okay, so that's those guys. The eyes are done with Flash Gets Yellow. And then I do like a little vertical slash down around the center, but near the front, so it can, can, it can kind of give you an idea of where the monster is looking there. Getting so tongue-tied, I shouldn't drink so much coffee before I film these videos. All right, and uh, the teeth are done with Rackarth Flesh, and again, shaded with that Rhinox hide with the rest of it, and then picked back out with Deck Tan from Vallejo. Okay, next on, look at some Tyranid Monsters. I've got five of these. We'll show you these three, and then we'll end with the two Devourers. And uh, basically copying that same color scheme, but this time, um, focusing the highlights around the face again and I noticed that with these models with these sculpts of these models these guys look these Tyranids these warriors look very um, reptile like compared to the old or compared to the newer models which tend to look a little bit more alien these guys look really almost almost like a like dinosaur like reptiles I think it's the teeth and the brow and the 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 face but the newer Tyranid models the plastic ones have armor plates that kind of stretch out and go over the heads more these are kind of small little mohawk armor plates so it makes the heads look a lot more I guess eggplant shaped and uh, it kind of reminds me of the H.R. Geiger, the uh, aliens from, from that movie, Ridley Scott's Alien movies. But uh, I think it also gives you, because of the shape of the head, it gives you a great, I guess, canvas to play with the highlights. These rending claws are done in the black claws that I, I mentioned before, painted with Abaddon Black and then highlighted with Mechanicus Standard Gray and then Dawnstone. And I did that also for the hooves, these black hooves. And then, you know, kind of keeping to the the streaks when you when you kind of feather the lines like you can kind of see like that it, it helps to make the eye create this uh, this this optical illusion in your brain that uh, they they are textured even though they're not so and uh, doing little feather strokes like that is really helpful for these venom cannons I just painted little eyeballs on the sides to make it look like they're they're alive and they're looking forward and I think I do that with my bigger Tyranid Monsters too, the Carnifexes. For the Bone Sword and the Spine Fist, I did Abaddon Black as a base coat and then highlight the edges with Cabalite Green and then Sybarite Green. And just kind of playing with various levels of those two colors, mixing and matching, that will help you to create this pretty cool looking effect there. Yeah, just look at that face. It looks like a cartoon dinosaur. 
the Flesh Whip was done with Bugman's Glow, shaded with Raiklin Flesh Shade, highlighted back up with Bugman's Glow, and then adding a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone. All right, these guys I'm very happy with, very proud of. They are the ones with the Devourer guns. And when you use Rackarth Flesh and you shade it with a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade, I added a little bit of Raiklin Flesh Shade so that it kind of makes the Devourer tip of the guns there look a little bit like skin. And then um, very, very thin application of Gosh, what was it? Drukai Violet. I think the old color is Leviathan Purple. And it, it kind of makes it almost look like sickly dead skin that hardens into this bone, this ivory. It's a cool effect. You can see it really well if you look up close. But um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with the way they came out. The back of the gun is... I tried to make it look like a, a bio-created, biomorph-looking thing. Like it's really alive and it's not just a piece of equipment, but it was a it's a it, it's a life form that was bred and created to be a weapon. So it co copies the same color scheme, red with blue armor plates, and then uh, I used along with the little weapon coils from my my uh, biovore there, cabalite green, and then highlighted with sybarite green to create the power coils, just for a little bit of pop of color. And there you go. I'm so happy with this project. I think it was a great one to work on. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more crazy commission work from my studio. You can also check out my Facebook at Warboss Tay and Twitter at Warboss Tay. And I've got all the links to my Patreon and the Google group down below. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.